carry versus Lady Carry. Boo Reckless says not today! Growing up, I always watched LEC and seeing the Eastern teams always smashing my favorite pro players was kind of sad. Now, more than ever, we have the best shot of actually proving that Europe actually wins the whole thing. Chunked out a number of autos. Take a look at that! The Hex Trigger Shield! And Caps turns it around! G2's dominance has been truly challenged, but they were not conquered! So who wants to kill the king? I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that we can get our revenge. Get some plates, they now have their eyes set on Manic, trying to match the play, trying to look for a little bit more. The flash oh! out to Prox is too clean. The only proper way to end this summer split is having a G2 Fnatic final. But may just be caught out again. No, Shaka once again can't find the opportunity. Brox the kick back, the kick flash from Brox is too clean. But he's running for his life, the 80 carries are still alive, they're still untouched. Whippo goes in, he's trying to save the day. He does so much damage, the resets are there for the pike. We didn't come here just to beat Schalke. We're here for one thing, and that's to beat G2 and get our revenge. I dare you all to come and challenge me on the edge. That's where I have the most fun. I don't think G2 is the best team in the world. I don't think anybody's the best team in the world until they go off on that world stage and prove it. I don't think we're going to lose this split. I already visualized myself lifting the trophy. When we're into the stage in Athens, we're going to have a sixth man on our team, and that's going to be the fans. We're going to prove exactly why we're G2, why we're the team that won MSI, and why we deserve to represent Europe at the biggest stage. Peak League of Legends is European, and this is what it looks like. Twelve weeks in the making, eight teams defeated and discarded, two challengers survive, one your champion. Today is bigger than a final, more important than Fnatic and G2. Today the world is watching and we are going to send a message, we are EU. Your history was forged in battle. Athens, you are the birthplace of competition. Athens, this is your moment. Europe, this is your signal. Today's final features the best teams in Europe, the most successful organizations in our region, and only one will be victorious. Etched onto this trophy is G2 Esports, and today, Fnatic are going to stop them. Athens, shall we meet your combatants? In the top lane!
Fanatics Broxa! In the mid lane! Jeez, two caps! For Fanatic Nemesis! In the battle for the bot lane! Jeez, two hooks! <laughs> Fanatics Reckless! Last week, we went very easy on you guys. Athens, do you want to go hard on G2 tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, your LEC Summer Finals. G2 versus Fnatic starts right now. Quick shot, and it is my profound honor to be joined by Betty and Foskuin on the caster desk for this. The first time we've ever had Medi Betty for a final, and Foskuin is just the icing on top of the delicious cake we have today. And what a wonderful final that we will have the pleasure of casting Fnatic versus G2, both teams on form. Last week, we got all five games. And today, expectations are that we can get the same again. And that's kind of the question. Have G2 figured out the blueprint on how to take down Fnatic since the last time they formed? Or, as Deficio said on the desk, have Fnatic got something secret up their sleeve rumbling? They said that they got better practice, that they're in better form, and they're ready to take it to us. That's always going to be the question. After we saw such a barnstorm over series last week, are the teams going to be able to bring the same form into the finals in Athens? Are they going to have prepared anything different in the week between? Because these are our two most successful organizations in the history of the LEC, battling it out consistently at the top of the chart. And frankly, I think the expectation is everyone buckle up, because this is going to be an explosive, bloodthirsty match. These are our two best early game teams in the region. Fnatic had G2's number every single time that last best of five, except for the final game where G2 made the largest gold lead Europe has ever seen at 15 minutes. This will not go quietly into the night. It was only yesterday we saw Fnatic demolish Schalke. Seems like the fans in Athens are hoping for another Fnatic win, but we are just on the cusp 
of jumping into Champion Select for our first game, and I know G2 have a lot to say in, these, in this best of five. I'm, I'm just so excited to see these two teams go at it once again. We know it's going to be a bloodbath. We know that both these teams are going to be looking for early game plays. We got to see some great creative level one strategies from Fnatic yesterday. Have G2 prepared something? Because let's not forget the last final that G2 was in, they set an international record. The last European final they were in, they set a European record. These guys break records when it comes to finals. And looking forward to the draft, it was G2 that selected for the blue side. Now, that was also what they took in that best of five. And the strategy was, okay, deny the twisted fate. Take away the Rakan with a priority pick. And I'm wondering if G2 are going to run that exact same strategy as the game one tester. Push Fnatic, see if they've got anything else or if they've already figured them out for this best of. I feel like Twisted Fate is definitely going to be on the band table from the 100%. side of G2. Um, last week, they left both the Twisted Fate and the Yumi up in the very first game. They came prepared with the strategy that did not work in game one. But I would imagine that G2 will either be playing and practicing the Yumi a lot themselves coming into this week, or will have a special answer to it. Perhaps maybe not the Mordekaiser Pike. This I don't want the Mordekaiser Pike again. It could work, though, you know? We don't see Perks teleporting up at level five to the top lane. Maybe G2 will run it back and try and use that combination. But all I know today is there's going to be bloodshed. There's going to be early game fights. Only yesterday, Broxer demolished Schalke in the early game on his knee. Sin had some incredibly strong matches. And we'll see if he can bring that form into today. And I don't think you need us to tell you that this crowd a little bit fanatic heavy. <laughs> Brox has said it himself yesterday that they're going to have the sixth man of the crowd behind them, the seventh man of their seven championships behind them. But and don't let that count out the G2 fans that are very vocal in the crowd as well. They are here, they are supportive, and they want to see G2, G2 make the run for the Golden Road, have the spring split title under their belt, the MSI title, the summer title, and last but not least, the world's title to round things out. Well, G2 are a team to set records, and the Golden Road has never been done before. We'll see if they can take the next step along it with a victory today. But we're going to jump on into Champion Select. G2 on the blue, Fnatic on the red. We'll see if that Twisted Fate, if that Yumi gets banned away, because so far, we only have an Aatrox and Kiana banned. So it looks like that they are continuing with the bans that they ran against Fnatic in the last few games against them last week. Aatrox and Twisted Fate taken off the board. Fnatic copying the same strategy that they had last week again with the Kiana and Yasuo. They do not want to give G2 Esports these picks. But now that you have three picks and one of them will slip through, that's the Akali, the Silas, as well as the Yumi. With the Rakan being banned, does this put priority on a Yumi first pick if Fnatic don't pick it here? Or will G2 get their flex pick of the Akali? And that's the thing, because G2 have had this week to practice the Yumi to make sure they are adept at it, it makes it very difficult for Fnatic. And you can see them saying, OK, we can't risk Mickey picking up that Yumi. We're going to have to ban it away, but that unleashes so much power for G2. Ah, oh, the curveball here. We know that both Mickey and Hilly, incredible, accomplished Pike players. And I just said, Mickey and Hilly, I need to throw in the rest of G2 while we're at it. This was something in the second time during the regular season when G2 and Fnatic met, where Fnatic, following that game, said, we can't afford to leave Pike open against this team. Every time it is up, Mickey is terrifying on it. Now, while they were able to get the better of them in game one of the best of five last week, it is still something you always have to respect when it is in Mickey's hand. But that now means that giving away this priority pick, prioritizing the pike, you allow the Akali to be picked up, preferably for Nemesis. You have things like Brox's Gragas available. The Zaya is still a possibility. Kaisa was flashed. There are so many power picks that Fnatic can grab on two and three. Remember that Fnatic could not ban out the Silas this time round, which means they may have to put a priority on it this round in the draft, and that's exactly what they do. They're trying to limit G2's answers to the Akali, and now they're the ones saying to G2 Esports, what have you got left in the tank to answer our double even triple flex pick. Well, straight away, G2 are going to lock in the Gragas. Expect that to be going to Yankos in the jungle in a pick that Wonder shone on so much last week. The Kled locked in before that second phase of ban. And we do suspect that it will be a top lane Kled after Wonder's performance. But I will remind everyone in the LPL, it also is flexed into the mid lane position. And in I've the seen LPL, some, everything's flexed. For I've us. seen some crazier things come out. So again, that question that Avedius brought up, this idea of what do G2 have into the Akali Silas 
potential triple flex if that Silas goes into the jungle. We will see the Zaya locked in for Fnatic as well. No too, no, not too surprising, rather, given that Reckless put a lot of value on this, not only yesterday, but also last week when they played up against each other. So you can see a lot of strong picks locked in for the side of Fnatic. And, and if you're looking at many teams around the world, you see this trap from Fnatic, you're thinking, okay, this is already looking very good, but they're going up against G2, who have got a lot of comfort picks of their own. And now we expect to see that mid lane pinch. So you can already see the Syndra go through. If they also want to get rid of the Corky, a very safe champion into both the Silas and the Akali that can survive and try to hyper scale for that late game. Pinching the mid lane here by Fnatic does mean that that AD carry will be left open. The Kai'Sa is still a very viable option for G2. We saw them flash it earlier on. G2 trying to remove some of the stronger supports from Hillisang with the Thresh back. I think it's really easy. Perks has so many options he can go towards. Not necessarily just the Kai'Sa, but also the Ezreal, especially if that is going to be Mickey's Pike roaming around. Ezreal will be a very safe pick, which is why I'm glad that Fnatic say, no, 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 no. You will lane against us. You don't get to just sit back and farm with Q and allow Mickey to cause terror everywhere. Yeah, it looks like they want to try and put hooks on the Kaiser. Fnatic could be looking at a Nautilus pick for themselves. Uh, save the flexibility until the final rotation on red side. Uh, we'll see what G2 look to ban away. And it will be the Shen. So they want to try and deny that both in support along with on the top side for Fnatic. Yeah, getting rid of the Shen, getting rid of one of those globals that was so impactful in the series last week. Now, Fnatic have a couple of options here. Could look to put, pick their support so they have a counter pick up last. And that seems to be where they're going. The Morgana and the Nautilus are kind of the two picks that stand out. How much safety do you want versus how much engage you need to break? Ooh, the Jax. This is actually something that was banned oh. heavily. Oh, okay, they're going to make an immediate pivot towards the Leona. Very lane dominant champion. Provides a lot of crowd control in team fights as well. But the quick response from G2 going for the Lucian. And this could be Caps' oh. the block. You have to bring the mobility. Now you're dealing with a long-range engage tool because that's what Fnatic were really missing, which is why I didn't like the Morgana hover. They need the Leona ultimate to really kick things off for them because otherwise it's so hard to start fights. But that means in response, G2 grab things with dashes, the LeBlanc, the Lucian. It's going to be very difficult to lock them down and to find that ult. I mean, the great thing for Fnatic there was they knew that LeBlanc had been locked in. They knew where G2 were taking these champions. And so they had that counter pick for last. They lock in the Jax. They say, well, take Silas in the jungle, we'll take Akali in the mid lane, and we'll try and have some of these scaling threats later in the game. But outside of just the scaling threats, Fnatic have a very well-balanced composition. You look at that, you can easily see the 1-3-1 one, one capabilities of the post-level 6 as soon as Silas is 6 in that jungle. But also, first item, Akali, super powerful. First item, uh, Zaya to three items, Zaya, incredibly powerful. I think they've got every single base covered, no matter what point it is of the game. I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot of skirmishing I'm looking at this draft from G2, and I see so much mobility, as Frost was saying. And I feel like that they don't need a huge amount of items to be strong. They only need that level six mark. Once they get those early levels under their belt, they can start looking for fights, looking to try and shut down this Jax. And I think that's going to be extremely important for G2, because if you just really leave this Fnatic composition to scale, as you said, Frost, they have those options, they have those items, they have the champions and the comp in order to challenge challenge G2 in these mid to late game Which fights. is why I'm looking at a pick like our MVP, Yanko's having something like a Gragas, the ability to get off those early ganks, and he can attack any lane he wants, especially when he starts pairing up with Mickey. We expect this to be about roaming jungle support. Well, we are almost ready for game one of this best of five. Fnatic versus G2, the final that everyone expected, the final everyone was waiting for. These two titans of European League of Legends clashing on Summoner's Rift once again. Bloodshed. Fnatic G2, this is your moment. Europe is watching, the world is watching, and they are waiting to see just how much you've got. And what better way to do it than with locking in some of the signature picks for both of these teams. The Pike for Mickey. 
we get to see Hillisang's Leona. Now, admittedly, not one of his signature picks, but something that I'm sure will create a lot of chaos, especially once he hits that level six mark. One of the big things about Leona is that while she is skill shot reliant, her chain CC, her ability to stack on top of setup for the Zaya's feathers, means that if a single one lands, you're likely gonna die. It also means that if Mickey does pick his moments to roam, Fnatic have brought tools to punish perks if he's ever alone in the lane with that chain CC and with that zone control that you're talking about that Zaya and Leona can bring. And as much as Leona is a champion that you can see Hillasan playing, the aggressive play style, the ability to make plays, he hasn't played it since 2015 on Unicorns of Love. He's only played it four times in LEC history. This is a callback for Hillasang, and we'll see just how effective he can be on it. We're also going to be looking at this top lane matchup as well, because every time Whiffle played against the Kled last week, he was struggling. Uh, he didn't get jungle resources, he was left on an island, and Wonder got the better of him every single time. Now, he's on a matchup where he can actually skirmish and fight him in the early game, and he outscales the Kled later on into the game. You can already see he's getting a lot of successful trades down against Wonder, and this is going to be a big point that Fnatic can look to leverage early on. Hillisang trading here onto Mickey. The Zenithite lands, Ignite goes down onto Hillisang, and Mickey's flash away, but the Ignite is taking it back! Fanatic And two minutes into the game, Fnatic's bot lane again pushed G2's bot lane around. This is what happened all series the last time these teams faced. But here comes Jankov. Jankov's coming in. The root corner's gonna land though, and Perth's just about able to escape. Jankov flashes forward looking for the, uh, the slow one to reckless. Perth will take the kill. And now Hillisang has to walk away. This was the bloodshed that we all came for. This is G2 versus Fnatic already. The two versus two kills coming down bot. Jankov has now hit level three and Broxit is back in base, so the likelihood of a counter gank not gonna come down from the side of Fnatic. But again, just to re-emphasize, it was Mickey the last time these teams fell. Jankos going fighting. back in, Reckless, base check straight into it, but he'll take down Perks, and here comes Hillisang! The TP comes in! Jankos takes out Reckless, but Hillisang's gonna get counter kill, and now double TP is coming in. Quiver and Wonder join the fight in the bottom lane, Hillisang trying to survive, flashes forward, stuns up Mickey, it's a double for Hillisang! Wimbo are gonna fight, Wonder has the red buff, but Wimbo can keep chasing in. Wonder's gonna get dismounted, now Wimbo realizes he can't fight anymore. Voxel is on his way down, but he can't find the connection. G2 recognize that the jungler could be in the bot side of the map. Wimbo does have a level advantage right crash. now. They don't want to try and dive, Wonder. He's too difficult on the champion. Already seven kills, three and a half minutes into the game. And the important thing being that all of those summoners are now down for those bot lanes. So I think it's only going to continue to snowball from here. Uh, I see no reason for either of these teams to let up on the aggression of the bot lane. The TPs are down, the flashes are down, and you have so much CC and setup for these junglers. So Wonder will be able to back first, start making his way up towards top lane, and he needs to do that, because if you have a look at the top lane wave, there's actually a slow push, and while Broxa looks for a gank in mid. Broxa going in, Caps poured out a little bit here, Nemesis looking for the Shuriken, but won't quite connect, and Caps is going to jump back. Should be able to survive this pretty easily. So with the information that Yankos has on Broxa, he's able to invade towards the top side and actually steal away some of these rafters. A huge wave is going to be stacking up towards top lane, and I wonder if G2 could look for a gank. Whippo does have his flash available, and you can see Yankos pathing his way up top. And you already briefly mentioned the dive potential of Kled. You were talking about his safety, of course, his ability to juggle the aggro with Skarl, so they could look for a play like this. Yankos has been spotted out, teleport available for Nemesis. Boxer coming down towards the bottom lane as Mickey Wu. Just jump away. Yankos is behind this, but not looking for the dive yet. It's too dangerous now that Nemesis has reset and has access to the TP, so wisely G2 say, we're going to let it crash. We can't follow the Akali up. Let it go. So as we crest the five-minute mark, it's been action-packed. Let's have a look at exactly how these early kills have affected the game. There's only 600 gold between the two teams. Fnatic slightly ahead. You've got the remnant of the aspect finished on Hillisang. His support item is up there. But in terms of AD carries, they're still both pretty even in that bottom lane. Really, a uh, big difference was also for the fact that Mickey, uh, having gold to go for the boots, didn't get to upgrade any of his support itemization. So we'll see if he's able to either get back to the lane faster with those boots, keep himself topped up, or start making more plays, kind of skirmishing in this early jungle with the added mobility. Broxa is investing a huge amount of time towards the bot side of the map. He's here to offer some support towards Fnatic. He recognizes that they're pushing in this lane. He wants to be there so that they can push it underneath the tower and get the bounce back. I don't think they should go for a dive, even though there are no summoners. Yankos is in position, but Nemesis is making the row. Especially because that cleanse on perks just about to come up. They're looking for it. Better to pop here by Yankos. He starts to run away, but G2 wants to defend that tower. Don't want to lose these plates too early. Zenith Blade doesn't quite connect. And that is G2's go signal to try and get back to the tower. One plate forward for Mickey. 
Could look for the Stewart. Hits Hillisang. The rest of the meta can't hear anymore. Hillisang so tanky. But at the moment, Perks is just shredding through him. Nemesis coming in from the side. Has that level 6, but won't come in for the gank. G2 are just wasting Fnatic's time right now. Nemesis is in between two lanes. Not really sure whether he should come and help for the fight. Meanwhile, Mickey is continuing the chase. Now, while Fnatic didn't get anything off of that, and I agree with you that G2 did buy up a lot of the time on the play, Fnatic also didn't really lose anything. They exactly. got the play, the wave had been pushed in by Nemesis in the mid lane, so he had room to make the roam, and Whippo is continuing to be a terror up into that top side. You can't see anything reflected in the CS, so overall, I still call it a win for Fnatic. Looking at Kelasang right now, something that he often likes to do every time he resets is look for a roam. But given that there are no summoners towards the bot side of the map, it looks like that he's actually just going to head straight towards bot lane. I think he wants to respect the fact that Nemesis does need to reset, pick up a couple more items, and respect to him in this matchup, even though he's looked for a couple of roams and a struggle in terms of the 1v1 against the Blanc, he's staying relatively close in the far. And speaking of roams, we now see the mobility boots on Mickey. Frosky mentioned it earlier on. He does like to look for some of these ganks, help out Caps, try and get some of these skirmishes early on. It's mid time, boys. And Mickey has hit level four. This is usually the level around which both supports like to roam around the map. But because Hillisang prioritized upgrading his vision trinket, uh, he's not going for mobility boots. So instead, he's focusing more on playing around Reckless and helping him get through what has been a pretty chaotic laning phase. And really, he's just clearing out a nice pathway for more ganks. Yanko's now slipping in underneath this lane. But Mickey has gone all up and down that river and knows that it's clear for now of Fnatic Vision. So let's have a look at what summoner spells are available. Flashes have come up for Perks, Mickey, and Reckless. None available on Hillisang right now. TP's unavailable, and Wonder is making a roam towards bot. G2 heavily investing in this play. Great flash away from Reckless. Hillisang will be able to tank this up for the moment. Mickey's going to land the skewer, the pullback. Yanko's there with the belly buff, and it's shot down. Mickey, uh, Hillisang is going to fall. Reckless underneath the tower, but they could look for a further dive. Beautifully executed from G2. No flash available on Hillisang. He tried to use the minion to avoid it, and then the smite comes down from Yanko's to allow Mickey to land the bone skewer. G2 find a kill. They equalize the kill score, and they're going to grab themselves some plates. But they still have pulled Wonder. He's walked all the way here now probably going through mid lane to get back into the top lane as the wave's crashing into him. Whippo will pick up another plate and has so much more CS underneath him. Look at Mickey. Waited in the bush. Box is just around at the corner. Reckless. Maybe thinking that he could be in there. Mickey will just about complete his back. Whippo still in the top lane pushing in, looking for that second plate. Wonder is on his way up. And early on in this game, it has been absolute chaos, I have to say. Now we can see a gold difference starting to be built towards Fnatic. A part of it is up towards the top side of the map, but it's also being built in the bot lane thanks to those early kills that Reckless picked up. Wonder actually coming out pretty ahead in this trade. Let's use the bear trap on the rope. Now he has the pocket pistol. Whipper's going to jump away, but Wonder still has the flash. Whipper has a flash of his own if he wants to try and get out of this. We're looking for the counter strike. Nemesis kills Caps in the mid lane and 1v1. Wonder flashes away. Whipper chases him down. And Fnatic find two quick kills. Fnatic answer immediately as Whippo comes up huge and Broxa finds a successful kill in the mid lane. Fnatic showcasing what they showcased last week. They can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against G2 in the early game. They can match them individually and they will punish them when they make these mistakes. And it goes from bad to worse for Wonder up in this top lane. He made a very long roam as we take a look back at this mid lane play and now Whippo's just getting further and further ahead of him. Caps tries to use his fancy feet to avoid this situation. Mickey does what he can to assist but the mobility of Nemesis and Broxa and the fact that Caps was so far up in the lane made it easy for the Fnatic mid-jungle duo to secure that kill. And now Fnatic extend their gold lead to 2k. And some questions we asked coming into Pick and Ban was, have Fnatic got something new? Will G2 be able to read them like they read them in the final three games of the best of five last week? Well, Fnatic are showing us just how strong they can be in the early game as they go for a fight in the top lane. Yankos goes golden for a second, but was on the chase, but he doesn't really have too much mana. Broxa with the King Slayer will heal up, wanders on his way, doesn't have the charge, but Broxa's gonna be slow up and Yankos is just looking for the belly bot. Rocks are able to get behind the minions. Whippo stuck underneath this tower, but I don't think G2 can go for this. Maybe they can. Caps on his way. Whippo just needs enough of the leap strike, but he's caught out, and Caps will get his first kill of the finals. And you can see there, Wonder dismounted from Skarl. They were always going to go for that dive. They knew they have a perfect champion like Kled to empower that ability, and now they're going to force out the TP from Whippo. It looks like Whippo overstayed in the top lane, and that allowed G2 to reset back on the map and set up for that dive. Broxa, unfortunately, was not in a position where he could really help, and Caps was able to find a successful roam up towards the top side. We can now see a lot of level sixes coming through for the supports, some cresting the level nine mark as well, and those first items slowly getting closer to being completed.
And once again, thinking back to last week as we uh, go through this replay, we'll see just how G2 execute this dive because at this point, I thought it was pretty much over. Yeah, but the key thing to note is that Caps is setting to roam up towards top. Nemesis wants to try and answer, but he can't. He has to catch this mid wave. So G2 have the time to overcommit to the There's dive. There's a fight going on. Happens. Nick is caught out. Reckless will take him out. And Perks underneath the tower can do nothing to help his support. Yankos was coming in. The Cullen comes out. And Perks just chips away at Hillisang's health bar. But he is way too healthy. He can stay around. Broxer actually working his way down into this bottom bush. Maybe looking for the three on one dive. We'll see if Fnatic can execute as the Oracle's lanes is being popped here by Broxer. No ward in the second bush. Perks might not know what's coming. Nemesis on his way down. Yankos waiting around the corner to try and defend his AD carry. But it looks like for the moment, Fnatic will be satisfied with turret plates. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Gripple and Wonder are trading. Gripple's looking for the plates as well, but Hillisang's gonna go in, the cleanse away. Perks there, Mickey looking for the cell, will land it, and Hillisang's caught off guard. Shut down, comes out from Yankos, the MVP of the split, shows his worth for G2, and Mickey comes in just in time to equalize the score. And why Whippo was trying to keep Wonder locked down in the top lane because there is a TP discrepancy. The rest of G2 did collapse onto that bot lane terror and finally punish Fnatic for their aggression. G2 able to answer back. The kills continue to remain the same, but it is Fnatic that are coming out ahead in the gold. Oh, we see Caps looking for Nemesis. Got straight onto Nemesis, who's in the Twilight Shroud. Nemesis will jump away. Caps goes back, and Brox are now caught off guard. Three on one. Yankos takes the kill. The bloodshed just does not slow down. G2 find themselves another kill onto Broxer, and now Perks oh, is top lane. Oh, the top lane for some reason, and Whippo was not expecting that. Wonder with a bear trap on the rope will take the kill, and G2 have just put their foot on the accelerator. And Fnatic just lost track of the back timer. Suddenly Perks is now up into the top side of the map, walking all the way up there, and he gets involved. Whippo has been in Wonder's face this entire game, again, trying to keep this Kled locked down. He also forced out the TP exchange, and I think the bloodshed's going to continue. That's a teleport. Oh, here we go. That's Hilly. Teleport comes in, they're looking for Perks, it's Reckless, it's Nemesis, they're both here for the party. Yankos and Mickey down towards the bottom side, the Perks stunned up. The Solar Flare comes down and he eats it all. Reckless will take him out. And Fnatic have found a pick in the top lane. And another great punish from the side of Fnatic. I love the fact that they too are not slowing down with their aggression. Great utilization of the teleport from both Nemesis and Reckless. The punish the extension. Oh, G2 right is by the catch. G2 answer with another pick of their own. They find another kill. Fnatic now pushing up towards the top side. If they can secure this plate, it's still overall worth it for Fnatic. Heavy, you're still continuing to funnel gold exactly where you need it to be. Broxa in the area, shadowing underneath Haley and Reckless to make sure that they can do this safely. Because if you step out anywhere, someone's going to find you and kill you. So thank you very much, Observers, for bringing up the gold. Because we need to take a look at some of these differences. Look Eddie at Reckless. Carry. Reckless is 1.8K ahead of Perks. Caps is ahead of Nemesis by about 700. Yankos is miles ahead of Boxer, 1.3K there. But we have to see how Fnatic are able to translate this large sum lead on Reckless into their mid game. This is what's so important for Fnatic. The fact that they've been able to match and answer a lot of the skirmishes from G2 means that they can transition quite cleanly from the mid into the late game. We already talked about how their team fighting can be so strong, but they also have great tools to be able to 1-3-1. One, one. If they set up pressure on the side lanes where they are stronger than the G2 members and then collapse, it's very easy for them to continue looking for fights like Reckless this. Reckless puts the feather to try and dodge away. Caps locked up and Reckless takes him out! That's from bad to worse. If you are a G2 fan, that is the last thing that you need to have happen. Reckless is going to be so much farther ahead on this back. They have to kill him. Skewer doesn't land, but Yanko's able to knock Reckless back. Knows he doesn't have the ultimate for now. They'll back away. Fnatic satisfied with top and bot tower, but Wonder's coming in. Looks like he just wants to defend this mid-tier one. Because now here's the thing. Reckless can just be moved from point A to point B. He's already an item or a, a half an item ahead of perks. On back, he's going to be a full item ahead of perks. So you just walk this fed ADC, especially Azaya, into any team fight and just win. Yeah, this time face tanking onto all of G2 and Perks is on his way. Boxer coming in from the side. Nemesis on the top as well. Watch that, Akali. See if he can jump into the back line. Not quite yet. Won't go for the engage. Fnatic happy enough. Just pushing G2 away. They're grouped up as five around this mountain. Drake, it seems that that is their next objective. Notice again on the mini-map how Fnatic have the top wave pushed in and the bot wave pushed in. They have these two strong solar laners that can maintain this level of pressure, which means that when they collapse, and find a successful fight, it's easy for them to translate that into an objective. G2 are forced to catch these waves. They lost too much health in the mid lane, and now they're on the back foot.
Fnatic should be looking for a moment to take the resets if they don't find these picks. And the goes in double solar flare as Mickey jumps into the middle of it all. Yakov there as well. Bruxel will take out Mickey before the Deathbird from below can connect. And Fnatic equalizes at 10 and 10. Whippo's trading into Caps here, and it looks like Caps is taking the wrong end of that bargain. And again, now that Fnatic are finally going to take these backs, they've gotten the dragon, they got so many waves funneled into Reckless, a lot of kills. They are going to be very rich and very powerful when they get back onto the Rift. The important thing to note is just like yesterday when we saw a lot of fighting in the early game, Fnatic is the team that is converting all of these skirmishes and fights into advantages. They're the ones that have two towers up over G2. They're the ones that have the gold on the correct carries, and they're setting themselves up much better transitioning into the mid game. So G2, they need to regain a little bit more control over the map because the more skirmishes that they take, the more it's hurting. And in draft, we talked about the strength of scaling coming out from Fnatic. If you're getting into the mid game ahead, that only gets exemplified. Look at Reckless, already has the Essence Reaver and the Rapid Fire complete on his way to an Infinity Edge. Which means there's this tiny window where during this reset, G2 were trying to see what they got. They got some damage on the top tower. They didn't push it down. They're getting some damage on the bot tower. We'll see if they're actually able to put that one down. But right now, as soon as Fnatic, again, get their feet planted back on the Rift, start setting up for the next play, they are in a very strong position. G2 has to be creative, but how they're going to get their foot back into this. And again, it's about the skirmishes. Whippo jumps straight onto Caps. He tries to distort away. Yankos is waiting just around the corner, going to join his teammate. Whippo able to survive. Oh, look at the damage onto Yankos. Yankos has to use his ult just to get Whippo off his back. The Trinity Force is now completed for Whippo, and he's working towards his Spear of Shojin. This guy is exceptionally strong, and you're seeing what he's capable of doing in a side lane. And it's already got to a point where no one on the side of G2 can handle him. So they need to be finding 3v3s or 2v2s without Whippo being there. But again, because of how easy it is for Fnatic to generate pressure on a side lane, it should be easier for them to group up and force fights that should always be in their face. This is the Rubik's Cube, you know, where do you force the skirmish if you don't want it to be around Whippo? And Nemesis also having completed the Gunblade, you have to be very careful about that lane assignment as well. Uh, Fnatic, they have so many tools about how they want to execute on this map, which is why it feels like at this point in the game, any objective that they walk up to, G2 are looking to try to trade. Now Fnatic will take the Rift Hell. G2 not going to find a trade anywhere on the map. Both Nemesis and Whippo have pushed in the side lanes. And we saw last week how devastating Fnatic can be with a the lead. They are not a team that slows the pace of the game. They are a team that continues to accelerate through the mid game into the late game if they ever get hit there. And with this Rift Hell, you have to expect they're going to do that again. Hinnasan clashed in, wasn't able to find his mark. And now G2 will continue just to try and defend their mid tower. The Colin comes out, won't connect onto Reckless. And Perks really not having the impact so far in this game he'd want. It is a bit dangerous for Fnatic as they approach this mid tower to try to push it down. Uh, if you had something like a Gragas, which is what G2 have capable, then approaching mid tower becomes that much safer because you can kind of sweep people off of it. So it feels like Fnatic are going to be more reliant on either Broxy using the Gragas cast to defend it or getting a pick in this mid. Well, Caps is looking for the pick. He jumped in, but Reckless will pop the Feather Storm straight away. One of the strengths of Zaya is the ability to get away from dodge when you need to, and Reckless has shown a couple of times how happy he is to pop that ult to make sure he doesn't take any damage. So Fnatic, we're approaching the 20 minute mark now, and they sit with a 2k gold lead. The Jax is incredibly strong, just hit that level 12 mark, and as both of you were saying earlier, the Gunblade being completed for the Akali as well means that she is a potent side lane threat. Notice how G2, very afraid to push past the river. They recognize that if they overextend, it's very easy for Fnatic to collapse, especially with all of their teleports up and available. With the Baron spawning relatively soon, I feel like we should start to see vision and priority shift towards that side of the map. Not necessarily to start it, but to use it as an objective to force the opposition into a fight, which is mainly what I think Fnatic is looking for, considering right now how strong they feel. We'll see if Fnatic can use that Baron, the next objective, to draw G2 into a 5v5. At the moment, they have a 2,000 gold lead, but G2 are sieging their mid lane tower. Hillisan trying to act as that front line gets pulled back. The solar flag comes out, though, and it hits on two. Mickey has to flash away. Yakos uses the barrel, but Wonder gets caught as he charged in from the side. And that is so many key ultimates from G2 used to try to break this mid lane tower, but it doesn't falter. Fnatic have to reset their cooldowns, but I expect this game to get stalled out. Again, they're really going to struggle to try to break this, 
Uh, I think they need to utilize those side lane strength that Vettius was talking about, you know, kicking out the Akali or kicking out the Jax into one of those side lanes, using them as a pressure point to leverage. Because if you just continue to walk at this mid lane tower, we're going to continue to A ram, push the waves back and forth. There's just too much wave clear. Yeah, you need to split G2 up and then threaten a potential flank. So you have to set up a deep push, but in order to do that, you need deep vision in the enemy side of the jungle, which right now is what Fnatic is not investing into. But at the same time, they don't need to accelerate this game. They there feel they very comfortable. They're quite happy to just slowly stack this farm, and they also have the Rift Herald. So this is the easiest way to secure that mid tower. Now we see Whippo getting collapsed on, but he has nothing to fear. Jax is just going to jump out to see. But using the Rift Herald in tandem with that pressure point, Hilly... Out. Yeah, he went a little bit too deep trying to protect the Rift Herald. Using the Herald in tandem with the uh, pressure point of Whippo into that bot lane, making sure that they uh, didn't have all five members of G2 under the tower and that the Herald would secure pushing down that mid lane. So important to take that on the objective because now Fnatic can really start speeding this game up again. See if they can. G2 are going to answer with a mid tower of their own. 3 to 3 in the turret score. Fnatic have a couple of dragons in their back pocket. Reckless pops the Feather Storm, but the hook Ep still pulls him back, and Yakos goes in. That was beautiful from G2. Perfection in a nutshell. And now Fnatic put on the bubble, double team T's to try and get back into the fight. Wonder was coming in the side, but Fnatic cannot answer for their AD carries. Death. Mickey makes up for his early game blunders with a beautiful hook onto a Reckless that had already flashed away. Great pick results in a in a tower kill in favor of G2, but they can't convert it into much more. But the key thing that I want to underline is the flash Look at being the jacks. down. Look at the jacks. Whippo chasing down perks. Perks doesn't have flash anymore, but he has got a blast cone and he hasn't got a light. Whippo shuts down perks. Got him. And now both AD carries missing their flash. That means that when we fight over this big Baron that both these teams like to take between 23 and 25 minutes, Reckless and Perks are playing on a night Caps end. is going for this, straight onto Reckless, but the solar flare will land! And Caps dived into his former team and was denied his kill. Now Fnatic gonna start up the Baron, G2 trying to answer it. But Fnatic have found the fight they want, they found the pick already, Perks already dead. He's down for another 13 seconds, Nemesis on the front line, and G2 can do nothing about this. The first Baron of finals goes to Fnatic. Oh, I guess Caps is just gonna jump into his death, and Fnatic will be like, ah, this is free, we don't even have to 5v5 for this. G2 are faltering just like they did last Last week and Fnatic are more than happy to punish while the kill score is even Fnatic have continuously come out ahead in the trades and they do so once more it all starts with here Hooks basing next to a ward and Whipple flashes on top of him to help secure that kill. Nemesis is in tow to help secure it and this just gives them control. They think that by having a numbers advantage it then gives them access over the Baron and they can get mid prio but then G2 should have just conceded this. Instead, Caps jumps to his death. The chain CC coming through beautifully from Fnatic's duo, and then Nemesis just zones Fnatic, uh, G2 away to allow Fnatic to secure the first Baron of Fine. Yeah, frankly, just a huge mistake there for Caps. And now Fnatic with the power of Jax in a side lane. Trinity Force and Spirit of Sojourn. Baron empowered minions pushing in that side wave. Nemesis going up towards top. It's the 1-3-1 that you two have both mentioned throughout the course of the game. Fnatic can enact it now and look to pressure G2, just like they did Schalke yesterday. But now it's just about lane assignments for Fnatic. Their uh, Akali and Jax are a very big deal. It's going to be hard, and even they don't even have to wait for the side lanes. You can see how much damage Reckless is doing because he was snowballed so far ahead, already completed three items on the Zaya. Everyone is online for Fnatic, and G2 just have to figure out how they're going to stop the bleeding, but they will surely give up something else on the map when they decide to commit their members. We'll see if Fnatic can break into the G2 base with this Baron. Two minutes left on it at the moment. Nemesis and Wivo just keeping those sideways. Interesting for G2, but the mid wave, the mid tower still yet to fall. Reckless trying to clear out a little bit of vision off towards the side, and the cannon minion is doing all the work. Perks eventually will clear it away, but that tower is one shot from down. Fnatic continue to push G2 back, continue to pen them back in this game. Patient play from Fnatic, just divide and conquer. Force G2 to split up. Use the fact that you have level advantages and item advantages to bully these members away. Bait G2 to come to you to allow you to secure these objectives and Nemesis demonstrating it beautifully in the bottom of your screen. Two members go top, Fnatic trade it for two towers. And now Fnatic are just going to knock straight on this door. Mickey on the front line, Hillisang's going to get stunned up, but they're just looking for the tower. Hillisang down to about half HP, the Ignite ticking away, but Perks doesn't have the mana to answer back. Whippo's pushed in that bot lane. That wave is about to hit the turret as well. 
Nemesis backing away, doesn't have teleport, so can't rejoin this fight too soon. And G2 have been able to hold on to their inhibitor towers. Yeah, it looks like instead Fnatic are going to reset. The Mountain Dragon will be spawning in one minute. It felt like the waves weren't quite as synced as Fnatic would have wanted to have them all crashing three times, but nonetheless, they get both the mid and the bot tower. So still, obviously, an advantageous play, 3,000 Baron. I feel like it also just sets up uh, nicely for the next Baron and next Man and Drake, because by securing those objectives, they can probably still use the next 30 seconds to secure the tier two in top lane. Uh, and that means that they can gain full control over the top side jungle and just leave Whippo to split push in the bot side of the map. Once the Baron ends and respawns, he will have his TP up and available. And look, G2 think this half of the map belongs to them. It doesn't. Caps locked up, flashes away from the solar flare and the rest of G2 will escape. Well, Yankos at least survives. Mickey though, caught out a little bit by Nemesis. We'll just dodge away and Fnatic are controlling the map impeccably. The Mountain Drake up in five seconds time. Baron just a little bit of time before that one comes back up as the Baron buff has worn off, but Fnatic used it beautifully. Slow and steady wins the race is what Fnatic is talking about right now. They don't need to rush anything. They know that the next Baron is theirs. They know they're going to secure this next mountain and with double mounting. Securing the next spawning bat will be huge, and that means for G2, they're hoping for a last-ditch fight, but with their comp, it was all about finding those successful early skirmishes, but Fnatic answered so perfectly. They traded evenly in the early game, and they were the ones converting those skirmishes into objectives, which meant that they came into the mid-game with this lead, and now G2 finds themselves in a position where Unless they find the perfect team fight, it's going to be very difficult for them to come back into game one. And I think that perfect team fight does start with the vision control because G2's composition is still kind of a sucker punch comp. If they find you and you don't know that they're there, they can just kill you. But Hillisang is the tankiest member of Fnatic. Yankos goes golden for the second. Caps trying to get him from the side. Reckless uses the feather sword. Hillisang's still alive and Yankos will be shut down. Here comes the charge in from the side as G2 are looking for the fight. Hillisang's going to go down. Off towards the side as well. Mickey has fallen and Fnatic are coming out on top. G2 can do nothing about it. One just dismounted. G2 destroyed as Fnatic find the fight. And you hit the key point there. The tankiest member. It was Hilly that they found. If it was Nemesis, if it was Reckless, if it was even Broxa, you have Gragas, you have LeBlanc, you have uh, Pike. You should be able to just immediately assassinate someone. But they couldn't find the target that they needed. G2 have been kicked around all game. Forced off of the Baron, double mountain. Fnatic can take whatever they want. Perks right now looking for Bwood. Oh, but he doesn't realize that Nemesis and Broxa are right behind him. I think he does now, Vedias. Perks going to dodge away, but Nemesis is on the chase. Fnatic are on the chase. And Pwipo takes his third kill of the game. Caps behind enemy lines here. Maybe thinking Reckless is going to start off the red buff. He knows it. Reckless jumps on, flashes away. Caps on the chase. Reckless. Oh, it's all Reckless. It's all Reckless and Hillisang. It's all Fnatic. Caps cannot find the pick. And Fnatic slap him down. Fnatic now sit with a 9,000 gold lead, 20 and a half minutes in. So many people wondered, would Fnatic crumble after their defeat versus G2 last week? And the answer is no. They smashed Shalke yesterday. They're smashing G2 in game one. And look at the execution here from Hillisang. Notice how he flashes away from the ultimate from Mickey to prevent him getting that reset. And because he survives for so long, it gives Fnatic the time to answer back with the damage, with the shutdowns. And Fnatic walk away the victors. In our Alienware replay, you can see Caps thinks he's got Reckless. The Phantom Dancer shield at the end here, saving Reckless's life. And Hillisang is there to stand by his AD carry at the end. And the key thing for me here is that Fnatic beat G2 in standard League of Legends. Fnatic priority was to deny Heli his pike. He pulls out the Leona, and he has had some hero moments and some clutch ultimates this game. And otherwise, it's just standard. You know, there's nothing special here from Fnatic. It's not even necessarily their Aatroxes, the Karmas, the comfort picks that were taken away from them. They actually just ran a clean game back at G2 and beat them what looks like very handedly so far. I also think that the adaptations that they showcased in the draft the fact that they were able to get Akali, Silas, and Zaya, we were talking about it. If you give a strong team this, th this trio, 
you're immediately thinking to yourself, oh, well, that's scary. Fun fact, if you give it to Fnatic, it doesn't matter if it's G2. This team still looks really scary, and that's exactly what they've done. To me, it kind of reeks of disrespect, and I don't think G2 will make this mistake again. I don't think they expected Fnatic to prioritize the Silas the way they did, considering how often they banned it last week, and Fnatic showing adaptation and development in the last week, and showcasing they can still challenge the likes of G2. Of course, they still have to break into the base, they still have to secure this win, but right now, things are looking great for Fnatic. It's by the numbers for Fnatic. They put Nemesis in top, Whipper Wimp bot, and now G2 think maybe we can find a pick on the side lane. Nemesis trying to get away. He chunks out Wonder. The charge comes out. Teleport coming in behind G2 now as Nemesis goes golden for the second. Reckless and Broxar are on their way. Whippo fighting down towards the bottom side. Wonder trying to chase onto Nemesis. Caps is there as well, but Nemesis will take him out in the 1v3. Meanwhile, Whippo is fighting down towards the bottom side. They'll kill Yankos. Caps trying to escape. Eventually, will be able to just store it away. And it looks like Mickey will escape in that bush as well. Gets back to base but meanwhile Whippo and Hillisang are knocking on the door of Fnatic Reckless is going to teleport in and this may be game one done in favor of Fnatic Fnatic taking advantage of G2's last stand and just crushing them underfoot. That's going to be the first inhibitor of the game secured for Fnatic. They're looking to take game one. Reckless. Oh, oh Reckless almost gets out. Plus, he'll take him out. Caps lands the chains, but Reckless rooted up. Doesn't really mean too much. Caps flashes away. The death from below. Stolen away by Boxer. Won't be enough damage, but now the Nexus turrets are the target. Hillisang. Reckless. The double kill. Fnatic have not come to Athens for second place. They have come to demolish G2, and in game one, they will cast them by the wayside. Fnatic are 1-0 up in Athens. And some draft adjustments need to be made for G2. I think they're going to look very long and hard at what happened here. Because you look at that draft from Fnatic, and you ask yourself, how the hell did a team get Akali, Silas, and Zaya from the red side? And what a performance from Fnatic. We talked about the bloodshed. What was it? Three minutes into the game, seven, seven kills, kills already. This team is willing to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We talk about how both these teams are two of the best early game teams we have in Europe. Maybe even in the world. But when we look at how Fnatic play the early game versus G2, it feels like that Fnatic trade these early skirmishes for objectives, whereas G2 tried to trade the early skirmishes for pressure. And the reality is they couldn't use that pressure to convert into anything else, whereas Fnatic was constantly coming out on top. Have to give a huge shout out and credit to the bot lane of Fnatic. Again, yep. the first time that this best of five happened between these two squads. Hilly and Reckless were winning 2v2s that they just should not have been winning. Uh, Mickey's performance definitely came into question. He was cleaner this time around, but consistently... Even then, a lot of mistakes in this game for Mickey. But consistently, Fnatic, Reckless, and Hilly are beating Perks and Mickey. Yep. And you cannot lose the bottom side of that. Everything seems to crumble from that. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And, you know, at what point do you have to stop saying Mickey is underperforming versus, well, the whole is, is just better. smashing. <laughs> exactly. I mean, when Hillisland can pick a champion, he hasn't played on stage for four years and just managed to beat down G2 as well as they did this game, I think you have to say Fnatic are performing exceptionally well. An incredible showing by them in game one. And I, I really wonder how G2 are going to react to this, because that didn't feel the way that we saw, uh, we saw Fnatic beat them last week. It felt like a demolition. But you're still kind of picking on what we know are some of the weaknesses of G2. The fact that you know that Mickey and Perks will try to fight uh -huh. you. And yes, it, it's not the strongest 2v2, especially when you look at Zaya Leona. You know, things are uh, not as cut and dry. But bring tools. And I think Fnatic realized that. Bring fire to power and bring tools to punish that aggression. Because you know Picky, uh, Picky, Perks and Mickey <laughs> are going to go for the punch. So just punch them back. Well, Fnatic landed the first punch in this series. For now, we're going to hand it over to the analyst desk to break down game one. Thank you very much, Fnatic. They have shown up and they have taken game one in the finals in Athens over G2 Esports. And it reminisced so much to last week when they did the same thing in game one and completely ran over G2 Esports. And what I want to get at with this desk segment is looking at how similar 
or how different it was and how they did it in game one. So talk to me about the picks and bans, Ender. Well, I think the, the biggest takeaway for me was that Fnatic got just about everything they could have possibly wanted. We look at the first three picks, Akali, Silas, Zaya, very powerful three-man core. We just look at power picks across the league, and then they followed up with the Leona Jacks. Those are the counter picks I wanted to see. Hill is saying on something that can engage and shut down both the Pike and the LeBlanc from the side of G2, as well as the Jacks for Bwipo on the top lane. I think what we saw here as well was a huge gamble from G2's part. They first picked the Pike, and they assumed that uh, Fnatic just are just going to draft the same. They picked the Silas in the jungle, which is a new pick, the Leona as a counter, and already there, they they were just thrown off because all of a sudden, they didn't have the Silas counter into Akali, and then we saw the level that just didn't work out. This is what we talk about uh, when we said Fnatic could benefit more from having this extra week after losing because they just needed to add a couple of extra things to their draft to suddenly start getting the advantages. Yes, G2 pick blue, they gamble on the pike as you highlight, but support counter pick in this series and last series was very, very huge. There was only one really super successful game where you blind pick support in that series. And uh, we saw how important the bot lane picks in general was, as well as the jungle. When we get into that game, what on earth was going on in that bottom lane? Try and break it down for me. We're going to take a look at the replays. <laughs> and why was it all going down bottom? Right, I mean, well, it starts off very early level two down here with a big blunder, I feel, from Mickey. They're both playing for level two, trying to finish off the last melee minion inside of the creep wave. You see, G2 hit it first, but then with the lockdown CC, Fnatic are able to take over to level two and that minion goes and down. No e on Pike. Mickey puts Hill or Hill Sang right on top of him. So he instantly gets CC'd. The ignite goes down as well. There's just not a lot you can do there after Mickey went too far. And this is something we saw from Mickey in particular last week, where the early games he did not look like his usual self, and he was dying just in this raw 2v2. No, I mean he was very greedy. I think uh Yankus actually tries his best here, uh, obviously to kind of stabilize it. At this point, I was like, damn, this really sucks for perks because he doesn't have teleport. He's gonna lose so much, but then because Another fight breaks out. Yes, he dies, but so does Reckless. So the CS actually stayed even. So that was at least a small win for G2 there. But of course, the top laners have to join as well. <laughs> I think what's crazy in all of this is Silas really didn't participate. And Brooksa, we always credit him for being such a high tempo jungler, always participating in the plays. But he should be very happy that his bot lane almost single handedly just carried this game. Absolutely. There we see it. Uh, Hilly Slang, because we always sing the praises of Reckless when he does well. But when Hilly is on, he is on. And he can single handedly win you games. Two weeks in a row now where it feels to me like Hilly shows up more prepared in game one to actually like instantly perform and punish Mickey for making some mistakes in the early game. The Leona pick was great for him. He had a lot of successful picks, also on caps and so on, later on in the game. So I think Hillisang deserves so much credit for this first game. I also felt uh, as a kind of callback to the previous series that they played, when Hillisang was, for example, playing the Thresh, it looked a lot worse. I think Fnatic loves it when Hillisang plays something with a lot of initiative where he can say, I'm going in because that is his mastery. Just finding those opportunities to always, always find the engages and throughout the game we saw that. That it is. Played fantastically. Someone else who played great but unfortunately didn't win for him. The MVP here today, Jankos. We talked a lot about the fact that when everything's going well, he has the easiest job in the world. But when it's not going well, it is so difficult for him because his teammates just keep running it down. Yeah, and that's why we want to kind of highlight this because it actually kept G2 in the game. Specifically the fact that every single lane were fighting and they were all screaming for Jankos. He was bot lane, then he goes top lane where Wanda's died 1v1 against the Jax. You know, a mistake on his side and a well, a good outplay from Whippo. But we see Jankos consistently pull off these plays and actually babysit lanes were under pressure. Exactly. And we look like 17 minutes into this game, the gold graph got brought up. Reckless and Yankos were the two big carries, the ones with all the money on these teams. Reckless had 18,000 gold. Yankos, the second most in the game, 16,000. So it was this huge disparity, even though Yankos was trying his best. He's playing jungle. He can't get the same amount of resources. He can't do the same amount of damage. And that's ultimately why I felt like Reckless had a much better chance to carry. And as we look at this final replay, I think Fnatic was already ahead. But what we said about that lack maybe of concentration and on stepping onto mm -hmm. the stage as concentrated as you may can, that happens here. Twice in a row, Fnatic gets picked off and gives Fnatic oh, this the one, Baron. This one. Oh, this he already one. did it once. Yeah, this is the third time, second time. I think you have to call into question now because always we brush off G2's mistakes like, oh, they're not oh, focused, yeah. oh, this is the best of five. If they lose the one, they can still play and so forth. But we have to call their consistency into question. Yeah. Are they taking the game seriously enough or are they just inconsistent as a team? Let's make it clear. Fnatic mechanically 
can match G2. Yeah. You said already in the pregame shocks, 100% agree. Fnatic can match these players on G2 side. That means if you are not playing as well as you can in these skirmishes, if you're doing some of these like Caps mistake right there, where he's feeling like, ah, come on, I can, I can, I can see what happens if I jump in. He already did it once. He disrespects the fact that Hillisang can be super quick on, on clicking Q onto him and stunning him, keeping him in place. I think two weeks in a row now, we have seen the Fnatic, they show up a lot better in game one. They prepare much better, especially mentally, when it comes to preparing for these games and actually instantly delivering in these skirmishes. And that brings me back to the question I posed at the, the beginning of the desk segment. How different or how similar was it to last week's game one and series? I feel like it is different in that we've seen new picks, we've seen the same, same mechanical prowess, but we've seen just as strong as a Fnatic. I think the biggest difference for me was Brox's influence in this game, because in this game, it really was just his team hard winning. 2v2 bottom lane, 1v1 top lane went their favor. Brox came mid lane and got that kill onto Caps. Right. But really, it was the solo lanes or just the lanes by themselves of Fnatic. But is it going to be enough this time? Him. I think so. I mean, I think the big difference here is they didn't rely on a specific pick like Twisted Fate. It actually wasn't a draft where you said, that one pick, oh my god, it can never happen again. That's what happened to TF in the previous series. It's not the case here. I think Fnatic are matching him very well. I, I think if we, if we want to see G2 stepping up, we need to make sure that Mickey X, Caps and Wonder play much better than in this game. I think also the draft, in the words of uh, the layman, it was a complete end. They took a gamble. You want I the think first pick Akali? It just didn't work. The first pick Akali, please, or the first pick Zaya, that works for me too, because the LeBlanc answer just didn't work out when the bottom was so explosive. And that's what Fnatic wants. They want the explosive bot lane. They want Reckless to take up that trophy. And they want him to be the championship player that we know him to be. Yeah, a lot to think about for G2 Esports. But it's Fnatic who made the first step towards the LEC title. But the reigning champions are looking to bounce back in game two. Quiver and Wonder join the fight in the bottom lane. Hit us like trying to survive, flashes forward. Stands up, Mickey. It's a double for Hillis. We see Caps looking for Nemesis. God, straight onto Nemesis, who's in the Twilight Shroud. Nemesis will jump away. Caps goes back, and Brox are now caught off guard. And I have a couple of dragons in their back pocket. Reckless past the Feather Storm, but the hook it still pulls him back, and Yakos goes in. That was beautiful. Reckless uses the Feather Storm. Hillisang's still alive, and Yakos will be shut down. Here comes the charge in from the side as G2 are looking for the fight. Hillisang's going to go down. Off towards the side as well. Mickey has fallen, and Fnatic are coming out on top. They have come to demolish G2, and in game one, they will cast them by the wayside. Fnatic Hi, I'm Pringles. I'm Chips. Wait, are we doing this Mac versus PC thing? Guess so. Then I am the Mac of the chips. Cool. Then I'm the PC. Perfect for gaming. Easy to eat, no greasy hands. Wait, I'm into gaming too. You mean like into the keyboard crumbled? No. Or into the team speak rustling? No, I'm, I'm into that new frag LOL thing. Well then, GG my friend. This is my creed. The items that make me stronger. The potions that I drink. But all this leveling up means nothing if I don't level up myself. It's the healthy potions I drink in real life that make me stronger. You are your most important champion. To play like a pro, eat like a pro. That 
That's what we call a wild esports fan. Thank <laughs> you. 